what do I want with another one? <laughs> Though in my next, in my expert opinion, Linda did not have the penis in me. This is not to say that Linda was without boldness. Some colleagues believe that she may have delusions of grandeur, a superiority complex. Not so much a superiority complex as an entire superiority subdivision. <laughs> when I consulted colleagues regarding Linda's case, some wondered if she has the gesprochen auf dem Kopf. How you say the, the voices in her head? Mm -hmm. But nothing could be further from the truth. No one who truly knew Linda Langston would ever accuse her of having an inside voice. <laughs> But who can be sure? Because even if she did have voices in her head, they would not have gotten in a word in edge vines. <laughs> After years of therapy, I was unable to diagnose a single psychological malady. Linda did not have the penis in me. She did not hear the voices. She did not have a superiority complex. And then, at our very last session, Linda had a breakthrough. She came into my office and we took our places, Vaughn on the couch, Vaughn on the chair, and then she made sure I was comfy on the couch. <laughs> she explains the trouble. She did not have a superiority complex, but everyone else had an inferiority complex. <laughs> it's not the job of the world to convince her that she is not so great. It is her job to convince the world of our potential greatness. And so she is no longer with us. In this way, she is still here. She is the little voice in our heads telling us to become what is possible. But she would say that with a lot more efforts. <laughs> <laughs> First is Bill Clinton who texted balloons, 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 balloons. I didn't get it either. <laughs> and then from our esteemed Senator Joni Ernst. Hello, I'm your Senator Joni Ernst. That's right, I'm your Senator. You actually elected me. <laughs> I'm the one who had the commercial about castrating pigs. <laughs> anyway, I'm supposed to talk about Linda, who I don't know, but I'm in pretty good, I've been pretty good at talking about things I don't know. <laughs> that said, I'd rather talk about things I do know, like pig castration. <laughs> Ask me about pig castration, and I can talk for hours. And then finally, from Senator Chuck Grassley. Oh, no. <laughs> What? <laughs> of course, it's everything you expect. I would have written a testimonial for Linda, but the will of the people compels me to delay any writing of said testimonial. <laughs> Even though Linda's dead, I must do my constituents' bidding and will, and will wait until after the funeral before a testimonial is written and voted on. That's the way it's always been done, right? <laughs> I'm sure that's true. <laughs> now, as many of you probably know, Linda and Dave often played host to many of Cedar Rapids' connoisseurs and cognoscentes. Their lavish dinner parties were known for for only the, the scintillating conversation of which Linda contributed a great deal. <laughs> but also for the succulent food that was served up and lots of good cheer. Now, many of you don't know is when the braised chicken or bacon wrapped pork chops were passed around, Linda had nary a bite. Linda was a vegan, which I'd like to say is a more healthy way of living, but then I'm a meat eater, and I'm still here, and well, she isn't. <laughs> so there you go. But to honor Linda and her foodie ways, we have a vocal tribute from our own Gail Elliott.
Linda Flagstone was a risk taker. <laughs> Provocateur, a challenger of all things sacred. Someone who consistently found herself immersed in a cauldron of boiling flood water. <laughs> Mobs with torches and pitchforks swarmed her office, demanding her head, or at least a check from the Whitworth Trust Fund. <laughs> Who could spot possibly speak to the challenges of such a treacherous lifestyle? Please welcome the next speaker, Linda's insurance agent. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, my name is Ignatius Roulette. Insurance agent, actuarial scientist, and public spokespersonage for the United Fire Group Insurance, right here in Cedar Rapids. You fug is happy to be the first. Is happy to be the co-sponsor of today's celebration of the death, I, celebration of the life <laughs> of the life of Linda Langston. Overjoyed, might be putting it a bit mildly. Thrilled. Relieved. We're talking a real, Mama, Dada, Santa's real and he got my letter kind of satisfaction. <laughs> because as many of you may or may not know, Linda was a longtime client of UFUG. <laughs> Clients might be putting it a bit mildly. Risk. <laughs> Liability. <laughs> Drain. <laughs> Something of a, we're losing power, Captain, and we can't hold out much longer. <laughs> Level of financial exhaustion, if you will. <laughs> because the promise of any great insurance company is to be there with you in times of need. When disaster or accident has taken away, we are there to comfort and to provide. We at UFUG are proud of the service that we give our clients and our community because we truly are there and we are all in this together. As we like to say around the office, just as there is no I in team, there is no I in UFG. <laughs> there is, however, an F and a U. <laughs> Oh. Which brings us to Linda Langston. <laughs> she was, let's face it, folks, a walking disaster era. And I do not mean that in the figurative sense. The actuarial scientists at UFUG have calculated that proximity to Linda Langston increased the risk of personal injury by 447%. <laughs> Take, for instance, the common cocktail party. Normally, we would estimate the risk of a non-fraternity social gathering <laughs> resulting in property damage or personal injury exceeding the claimant's deductible as one in every 5,347, which is comfortably within the premiums minus claims profitability calculus. Until Hurricane Linda hits the dance floor. <laughs> Linda Langston treated crystal stemware and dry clean only with the same casual violence that an Oklahoma funnel cloud treats a trailer park. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing personal, mind you. It's not that she was clumsy per se. It's just that when Linda got to talking, she just she had to express herself fully, and she would be damned if your Pinot Noir or barbecue cocktail wieners or dry clean only raw silk chemise was going to get in the way of a good story. <laughs> By the end of the night, everybody looked like they'd had front row seats to Gallagher's sledgematic reunion. <laughs> <laughs> and then David Langston would sleep, sweep in with club soda and napkins, <laughs> like Linda's own personal FEMA team. <laughs> And we would pick up the tab, which of course you Fug was happy to do, and happier never to do again. It's worth saying that Supervisor Langston never really liked the sobriquet Hurricane Linda, though she was quite fond of Act of God. <laughs> Even Linda herself was not safe around Linda. 
<laughs> Some of you may remember the winter of 2004 when Linda took up full contact solo cardio. An obscure sport of her own creation that mixes equal parts power walking, professional wrestling, and self-loathing. <laughs> Linda clinched the title that February when she body slammed herself, breaking her front two teeth and forcing regulators to disband the league. <laughs> Undeterred, Linda took up combat tennis in 2006 and immediately found herself on the injured reserve list after tackling herself at the baseline, <laughs> resulting in a scaphoid fracture that, thank Christ, said the end of her athletic career. <laughs> she spent six months in a wrist-to-shoulder cast. But undeterred, Linda would be seen in public appearances, <laughs> waving to the crowd, <laughs> which caused concern in the local Jewish community, <laughs> but did hurt her enthusiastic, albeit temporary, flood of support from the Steve King campaign. <laughs> now, if we could just get Carrie Kennedy off the courts, we would be in the black. This is the most expensive tennis player we've ever seen. We've never seen an insurance company pay for so many body part replacements of an athletic superior being since, I don't know, Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> which brings us to blood. A subject about which we are all too familiar at the moment. Linda, of course, worked tirelessly doing the 2008 flood and the subsequent reconstruction, and it could be said that her enthusiasm was born in part from the fact that her own Sun Valley house was damaged in the epic flood of 2002. That's right, Linda's house was flooded in 2002. Coincidentally, the very night of her election to the Lynn County Board of Supervisors. The Gazette headline the next day said, Linda Langston wins election loses house. <laughs> True story. <laughs> and always a trendsetter when Linda decided to celebrate her re-election in 2008 with a flood-themed party, the entire city of Cedar Rapids <laughs> decided to join in. <laughs> and now in 2016, on the eve of what would have been her fourth campaign for supervisor, the waters of the Cedar River began to rise. <laughs> so let me conclude this eulogy by saying, rest in peace. <laughs> and it's not a moment too soon. <laughs>